between 48 and 213 Hawaiians infected with the coronavirus undetected as of February 14th, Valentine's Day 2020. And we base this off of this uh, analysis from the Los Alamos National Labs. Uh, it comes from a Japanese tourist who spent uh, 12 days in Hawaii. He showed symptoms of the coronavirus infection on day 10 of his vacation in Hawaii, uh, plus or minus one day between days 9 and 11. So we have this uh, prob probability density function chart from Los Alamos National Labs, and we annotated it out and showed the uh, basically the, uh, accumula the cumulative distribution function probability that this person was infected in Hawaii. And what it comes down to is there was a 99% probability that the Japanese Hawaiian tourist who tested positive for the coronavirus when he went back to Japan was infected in Hawaii. And that basically means that there is ongoing undetected community spread of the coronavirus in Hawaii. So that's the summary of this. Now we're gonna go down into the details. If you wanna know more, stay tuned. So we call this DEFCON Condition 1 Hawaii. Basically it means Defense Condition 1. Uh, in the military that means we're at nuclear war. So basically there's 99% probability ongoing communal spread is underway in Hawaii. So the synopsis is, is that high quality data from Los Alamos National Labs indicates there's a 99% probability a Japanese tourist in Hawaii acquired his SARS-CoV-2 aka COVID-19 infection during the nearly two-week period he was in Hawaii on vacation. The source links and raw data are at the end of this post video. Given the high probability and uncertainty on how rapidly it may spread in Hawaii's climate, combined with the high societal impact, prudent risk mitigation may, may indicate that now is the time to either hunker down and gather supplies while it's still possible and economical to do so, or two, escape and evacuate the islands while it is still possible. You know, right now, you need to look at those islands as, uh, as if they were a cruise ship. Do you want to be stuck there? And if you're a tourist, you'll be stuck in your hotel. So this is the analysis of symptom onset date versus infection date. And basically, the way you read this chart, the simplest way, at least to read it visually, is, is that 99.2% <clears throat> of the people who have come down with the uh, coronavirus symptoms were infected within 10 days. 98.5% were infected within 9 days, and 99% were infected within 11 days. And the probability of infection is basically this for nine days is this small area underneath this curve compared to this large area underneath this curve and for 10 days you can see it's infinitesimally smaller and for 11 days you can't even see it so here's what we know about this tourist this Japanese tourist he was in Maui for eight days from January 27th to February 3rd he was in Oahu for five days from February 3rd to February 7th Symptom onset was February 5th through February 6th based on his reports. His hospitalization date was February 8th in Japan with 102 degree fever. The Los, Al <coughs> the Los Alamos data reports initial exposure to symptom onset is typically 4.2 days. So if you, for most people, or for a good chunk of them, if, you if you've got symptoms, you were infected 4.2 days ago or within 4.2 days. The data indicates or points to that 99% of cases have symptom onset within 11 days of infection. The data indicates that 99.2% of victims have symptom onset within 10 days of infection. The data also indicates that 98.5% of victims have symptom onset within 9 days. The Japanese victim had onset on day 10 of his Hawaii vacation. The max range here is day 9 to day 11. Based on infection versus onset data, there's a 99 to 99.9% .9 probability he was infected in Hawaii. So somewhere between 1 in 100 
and one in a thousand people who uh, have a, a coronavirus infection would show symptoms after this uh, uh, 9 to 11 day period. So here's our risk mitigation dis discussion. It's clear with near certainty that the Japanese tourist was infected with coronavirus during his vacation in Hawaii. That infection indicates that previously undetected community spread of the COVID-19 virus was ongoing in Hawaii at minimum during late January and early February. The lowest bound for this first infection in Hawaii would have probably been 12-31-19. And that's where we see data, the raw data out of this Los Alamos Labs uh, the report, and we'll show you that here at the end, of uh, people leaving uh, Hubei who actually had infections. Hubei, this is a state, Wuhan was a city. <clears throat> The Los Alamos Labs indic analysis indicated that in China, it is estimated that early in the epidemic, that's the first part of the outbreak, the number of infected individuals doubled every 2.4 days, and the RO value is likely between 4.7 and 6.6. .6. So that means every person infected turned around and infected between 4.7 and 6.6 .6 people. If those conditions hold true in Hawaii, and that's an if, and making the conservative assumption that the Japanese tourist was infected by patient zero. In other words, there weren't a lot of people around with the infection prior to the guy who infected the Japanese guy in Hawaii. That's also a big assumption. The data would indicate that as of Valentine's Day, there would have been approximately 48 to 213 undetected SARS-CoV-2 cases in Hawaii. For those of you who are wondering why I keep switching from SARS-CoV-2 to COVID-19, it's like the difference between HIV and AIDS. SARS-CoV-2 is the name of the virus. COVID-19 is the uh, basically the name of the uh, symptomatic infection. Eh, yes, it's symptomatic infection. Now, whether those replication numbers apply in Hawaii's climate is uncertain. But given the certainty of community infection and the societal impacts of COVID-19 infection, I can only draw the conclusion that if I was in Hawaii, one, I would either immediately hunker down and accumulate needed supplies while such, while such actions were still viable, or two, I would evacuate the islands while there was still capability to do so. Now here's a key takeaway. If Hawaii's Department of Public Health takes zero action, the Los Alamos data would indicate there will be over one million cases by mid-March. So we plotted out their doubling formula every 2.4 days takes us out over to 1 million by March. Uh, and that's pretty much the rate that there was in China. It uh, has slowed down in China because of uh, the Chairman Mao type interventions that are going on there. And we'll see how much Hawaii is willing to do. I think if I was there at the Department of Health, I'd, I'd be shutting down the schools because I wager children are the ones most likely to, uh, to pass this virus asymptomatically. And here's also a very important thing you need to understand about this. This is the, we we're talking about the data strength and weaknesses, the strength and weaknesses of the data that all of this is based on. Uh, the strengths are, one, credibility of Los, Animal, Los Alamos National Laboratory. These are the people who basically invented the atomic bomb. Uh, I went through the uh, analysis in quite some detail and it was uh, surprisingly good. Two, they use the highest quality raw data available. So they use their uh, Chinese speakers to get raw data from China, translate it themselves. So basically they got uh, first generation data. Three, the raw data is from individuals who had all traveled to Wuhan a short time preceding symptom onset. Since these individuals were the first cases detected in the provinces outside of Wuhan, it's likely that the infection occurred during their recent stay in Wuhan. So this is a group of people who were in Wuhan for a short period of time, went back to their home state slash province, came down with it. So there is a really good grasp of when they were infected and when they first developed symptoms. And that is something you do not find in pretty much any of the other data. So this is really good data on when people were infected versus when they first detected symptoms. So now here are the weaknesses in the data. This is important to understand too. While the infection onset data is very high quality, 
It is drawn from a pool of only 24 people. So those are the 24 highest quality data people that they had to draw data from. So again, this is based on 24 people. Uh, we took a quick look at the ages of the people and the sexes, and they seem to be relatively well distributed. Uh, weakness number two, Hawaii is not China. Hence COVID-19's reproduction number, RO, may be lower and rates of spread may be different. So the key thing is what's going on with the weather in, in uh, Hawaii. It's hot. And one would expect a, a weaponized virus to spread easily in the heat. Now, weaponized doesn't necessarily mean it was done nefariously. Uh, a lab would try to make a virus that was easy to spread to make it cost effective. And so they didn't have to keep their animals at low temperatures to infect them so that they could then simulate uh, infections in real world wet market type conditions. So weaponization doesn't necessarily mean that it was nefarious. Okay, here's a list of mainland or emergency risk mitigations we've taken in the mainland. We've covered these before in some detail. They are here. Uh, we make our own risk mitigation actions. We don't recommend our actions for you. This is just what we've done. Uh, what you do, what you decide to do, is up to you. So we give a hat tip out to Johan Muller on Twitter, jmuller5050, for uh, pointing us to this uh, Los Alamos paper and thereby allowing us to update our previous analysis. We did analysis of this probability a few days ago with doing a very conservative, uh, uh, deserv conservative distribution. We were going to go back and do our own uh, data analysis, but the uh, stuff out of Los Alamos National Labs is much data than the raw data we could have come up with. And uh, here's their link to it. We'll have this on the end of it. This is the uh, quick abstract. Here are the PDFs. And here's the supplemental materials. Uh, this is a key one if you're really interested going down in the weeds because it gives the actual case reports, onset, exposure dates, hospitalization dates, confirmation dates, death, date of discharge, death dates. So lots of really high quality information here. Uh, really worth getting into the weeds on this one for those of you who are uh, so interested. And that sums it up. Pray. Pray and hope that the Hawaii Department of Health is uh, up to snuff. And if you're stuck there, that you're prepared to be stuck there. And don't expect uh, guns and ammunition to be for sale in Hawaii for very much longer.